The athletic training program at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi has decided to include a section on social media this year for preceptor training. We have been discussing this issue with our students and have recently added a social media policy to the student handbook. While this information is important and I hope that it shapes your future social media practices, you are not being asked to sign a social media contract as well. But we felt like it was important to share this information so you as a preceptor know what is being expected of the students in the program. It is important to examine your digital footprint. For students, this digital footprint can affect scholarships, jobs, graduate admissions, graduate assistant opportunities, and many other facets of their life. As an athletic trainer and as a preceptor, you fit into many roles, personal, administrator, healthcare professional, as well as many others. These roles can be conflicting. Social media can be a great way to bolster these roles and to project your image. At times, this image is not always what it appears to be, though. Depending on which generation you are associated with, the values and hallmark features of those generations have framed your dependence on digital media. Please realize that some of these age ranges tend to overlap, so if you are in your 30s, you could fit into the Generation X or Generation Y category. Many of our students are Generation Z. Generation Z from the early 1990s have had the internet, cell phones, and digital media with them since birth. The impact of social media has been woven into their lives, connecting social and professional as one digital unit. And here we are attempting to influence Generation Z, this connected generation. So how we connect with them is important for all of us. Social media sites create an outlet to connect to, to educate, and to guide. Through these connections, our lines of distinction can be difficult to separate our personal lives and our professional lives. As athletic trainers, these distinctions are already gray. We work so closely with our athletes, coaches, physicians, and students that they become part of our professional circle. When you add family or friends to your personal circle on a social media site, these two circles of individuals now are connected. Even if you have a personal page for social media, it asks you questions about your educational background, employment, interests, and other things in attempts to connect your personal life to your professional life. The next topic for discussion is the law and social media. Did you know beginning in 2012, legislative agendas have included laws for protection from social media incrimination? California, Delaware, Illinois, Maryland, Michigan, and New Jersey were the first to have enacted laws that prevented employers from requiring or requesting that employees or job applicants provide their usernames and passwords for social media. Most of the legislation has been prompted by stories of employees who were required to share their passwords in order to keep their jobs, or were suspended after refusing to do so, or for applicants who feared that they may not be considered for a job if they refuse the employer's request for social media passwords. What legislation does not yet protect against is the perceptions that can be made via social media likes, posts, tweets, images, and communications seen by the world. Since 2014, eight states have enacted legislation which allows employers to access your social media information and you are required by law to share this information. These states include Arkansas, California, Colorado, Illinois, New Mexico, Tennessee, Utah, and Wyoming. It is important to note that there is at least one current lawsuit pertaining to the use of social media and HIPAA violations in every single state in the United States. In the great state of Texas, House Bill 318 was proposed on May 7, 2013, which prohibited an employer from requiring or requesting access to carry over the personal accounts of employees and job applicants through electronic communication devices, which established unlawful employment practices. This means that employers would not be able to request access to your social media sites as a part of the hiring, retention, or firing process. However, this bill was not passed. Additional legislation has been introduced and is being proposed in the state again, so stay tuned for updates. What this currently means is at this point in time, there's no legal protection in the state of Texas for an employer asking for access to your social media accounts. In addition, anything public or private can be used in the hiring, retention, or firing process of individuals. I was sitting at my desk when a headline came across my computer. Trainer, not my favorite term, 
should be athletic trainer, sends racist Obama tweet. I clicked on the link only to find it was a graduate assistant athletic trainer from the University of West Virginia who had posted an inappropriate tweet about Obama. His comments cost him his job. It didn't help that his profile picture attached to his Twitter feed identified him as a West Virginia athletic trainer. It is really important to understand that the things you post, the pages you endorse, the pictures you have, and the things you like are not protected under the First Amendment, the freedom of speech. A careful reading of the First Amendment reveals that it protects several basic liberties, freedom of religion, speech, press, petition, and assembly. Interpretation of the amendments is far from easy as court case after court case has tried to define the limits of these freedoms. At this point in time, these freedoms are not extended to the written word online. Also realize that if you have separate pages for your personal life and your professional life, they don't always stay that way. Olivia Sprager is a former English teacher at Martin County Elementary School in Florida, and she was fired after a parent saw this photo on her personal Facebook page. She did modeling on the side. How about this example? This is a very good friend who is a prominent physical therapist. It reads, Attention people seeking medical care. Here's your public service announcement or PSA for today to keep you from pissing off your clinician. Number one, stop using phrases such as I have a high pain tolerance and then my pain is above a 10 over 10. Neither of those are ever true. Number two, as I've stated before, stop telling us obesity runs in your family. You are obese because nothing runs in your family, including the people. Number three, do not complain that there are too many other patients in the clinic a week after you demand that your clinician have more availability since the next available appointment is three weeks out. Follow these simple rules and you will be much happier, especially if said clinician is placing a catheter, inserting a needle, or stretching an injury. You're welcome. When I first read this, I will admit I chuckled and nodded my head a little. His venting and ranting was completely understood and even evoked some sympathy. I have worked in an outpatient physical therapy clinic and I know these struggles are real. However, when reading it through the eyes of an employer or even as a patient, it's really not appropriate. These comments don't portray the profession in a positive light and speak negatively on a paying clinical population. In addition, they really don't demonstrate professionalism. This is another example of another post of an athletic trainer venting. It reads, what? The stands for the soccer stadium are in the sun? How dare I suggest parents sit up there? I'm just so rude. Seriously? Why is it an absolute shock to some parents that stadium seating for an outdoor stadium is outside? Venting about your job may reflect negatively on your profession. In addition, you have to be very careful what other people are posting as comments. For example, the comment that states, tell them to sit down, shut up, and do crafts, does not have a very professional tone. Don't get me wrong, venting is important, but I would highly encourage that venting be done behind closed doors with trusted friends and family and not via social media sites where other people can access them. Be very cautious about posting pictures of your athletes. This picture may be identifiable as it has the athlete's jersey number. So even though the athlete's face is not in the picture, we may still be violating their right to privacy. If you are working with minor athletes, please remember that you need written permission from not only the athlete, but the parent or legal guardian, and possibly the school district as well in order to post pictures online. Now, social media can be used for some very positive things as well. I love this picture of athletic training students who are demonstrating the complexities of athletic training for the NATA social media campaign. I love their whiteboard. Hashtag ATS are flexible, even in khakis. We can promote our profession and act professional in a digital environment, and you will note that there aren't any athletes even in this picture. The NATA Code of Ethics indirectly is affected by our social media usage under Principle 1 and 4. Principle 1 states members shall respect the rights, welfare, and dignity of all. Principle 4, members shall not engage in conduct that could be construed as a conflict of interest or that reflects negatively on the profession. If anyone is caught posting inappropriate images or text in addition to legal issues, violations could also result in issues with the ability to practice athletic training and maintaining your state license or national certification. 
I'm just saying. Remember what you do online is a direct reflection of your personal and professional reputation, so make it a good one. All of the examples that were used in this slideshow are not meant to negatively represent any individual or the profession. They're just used as examples to call attention to some things that we could be doing differently to help promote our profession. I've provided some resources and I would be happy to send this to anybody if they need the resources. Please email me at mikaela.boham at tamucc.edu if you'd like a copy of this PowerPoint or would like these resources. I would encourage you to talk to our college students and maybe even your high school students about these issues. There are a lot of new legal issues that are coming out of social media usage. We don't want to be the ones that get in trouble for that. Thank you for your time.